Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time, even if we don't get things going exactly as they should from the very beginning, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, suffering the same pollen problems that I've been facing, Larry Bubbles Brown, you say you're going through pollen uh, problems? Oh, yes, and I, I never had allergies till about 12 years ago. I yeah. mean, just, man, I just, uh, one day I was just, uh, I could, couldn't move. I was curled up on the kitchen floor. I just, so tired and just. Well, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I it's been it's been acting up, and I, I'm lightheaded, and you know, I'm, and then I look. They say the pollen count is moderate, but I don't know if I buy that. You know that uh, I was walking down the street the other day, and I saw stuff that I used to be allergic to coming down from the trees for crying out loud. You know. So, I mean, uh, who knows? This may pass. I went to my doctor once with the same thing a couple of years ago, and he said, allergies. Yeah. You know, well, my, pollen. My sister uh, has a bunch of trees around her house. So she has horrible allergies. Really? The trees just spread that crap, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just really just, it's terrible. Anyway. But uh, who knows? Who knows what the pollen count is in your area? What's your, uh, what's your um, uh, 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 what do you call it, your um, zip code there? Nine four uh, one two three, and I think the wait, wait, uh, pollen wait, wait. count in San Francisco is generally pretty low, but uh, it's not helping me. Dot com. Hold on a second. Pollen dot com. All right, I go to the pollen dot com, and uh, let's see here uh, the forecast. Uh, 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 yeah, but I want. Well, it's it, it's a little higher today, or yesterday it was higher. Let me see here. Where is it? I'm trying to see. Oh, okay, what is your zip code? Nine four one two two. Nine four one two two. Okay, let's go. San Francisco, California. You've got low to medium today. You've got low medium three eight. It's low. It's as low as mine is, and you're feeling it, huh? I still feel it. Yeah. Yeah, you feel it in your chest and your breathing and your yeah, and the and mostly the eyes and the uh, sneezing. And yeah, yeah. And tired. And tired. Okay, yeah. I I think yeah yeah you're you're doing okay. You got the same thing. Yeah, and then I read that people that have allergies they tend to have they have them because they have really strong immune systems. So our systems are actually overreacting to the pollen and crap. And oh really? Well, that's yeah. good. Well, anyway, I I don't know. What so that means is. we won't get the COVID. Well, knock on wood. Yeah. So the numbers are spiking again. Yeah, well, what I like about about the, the current state of affairs is if you come to New York, I have to quarantine you for 14 days. Really? Yeah, because our governor said that from certain states, he's not going to let people come in and not be quarantined. You know, because what we did, what we did here in New York was pretty amazing. We took uh, the highest spike ever in the country we were a hot zone okay we were having 800 people die a day do you know how many died day before yesterday hers way down eight eight okay okay and the day before that it was five you know actually it's gone up by a third <laughs> in one day <laughs> you know but i mean when you think about that that's an incredible thing we did here in new york you know, we completely turned the whole thing around by people wearing masks and social distancing and closing down movie theaters and things like that. We took a very draconian measure to save our lives. And now our biggest fear is people are going to come in from out of state and reinfect us. Because we, so you got a quarantine. We've cleaned house, literally cleaned house incredible just incredible but you know 
that's uh, the, the, but we, so I, I'm hopeful that we're going to be okay. You know, but well, I don't know. The numbers are going way back up. They said the death rate's still low, though. Well, the death rate may be low now, but it's lo- only low because we start. We ha- now have some um, uh, therapies. For instance, they don't put people on uh, on uh, breathing machines any longer. The res- re- respirators, whatever they call them, uh, because they found that might ventilators. Ventilators. They found that might actually be doing worse. So what they now do is they put them on their stomach, and they pump them full of radisivir, which is uh, a drug that seems to be good at uh, killing the the spread of it, you know, and uh, remdesivir. And I'm trying to think of what else they're doing. They're doing a couple other things. Uh, they're using uh, antib- uh, antibody uh, plasma and things like that. So the reason the death rates are down considerably is because of that. But that's not what you only look for. You look at for the rate of infection, and you look at the amount of testing you do and how many come back positive. And in our case, uh, we did, I don't know how many tests, something like 65,000 in one day the other day, and only 800 came back positive. Wow, so that, that So that means we've brought the infection rate down which is something you haven't done in California. They certainly haven't done in Arizona, and Texas is like, you know, a Petri dish. (laughs) Uh, And while they may not be as many people dying, and while the people who are getting it are younger, doesn't mean that people aren't getting it and spreading it. And that's the the big deal here. Well, I think the young people are the the ones that are primarily spreading it now because uh, we're going to bars and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, and, and we're, we're having that problem now. Uh, you know, young people are very stupid, I know, because I used to be one. Uh, and you used to be one, too. You know how stupid we were. And, yeah, we don't care about old people. We, we give it to them. Who cares, right? Well, I mean, here's the thing. They don't care because, oh, well, uh, I see them on TV and they go, well, you know, I'm young, and if I get it, I get it, and that's it, you know. Well, what if you go home and grandma comes over? Exactly. And your grandma gets it and drops dead. How are you going to feel then about you <laughs> not being able to get it? Okay, or survive it? Yeah, your survivability is pretty damn good. But grandma's isn't, mine isn't. And when you don't wear a mask, when you don't observe social distancing, you're, you've got a knife at my throat. You know, so and, and now you don't have any compromising conditions, do you? No. You're not fat. No, I'm pretty healthy for an old guy. So. For an old guy, you're pretty healthy. Yeah. So, you know, you probably survive it all right. You know, who knows? I, I I'd probably be dead in about five minutes after they got me to the hospital. <laughs> it's so weird though. Some people get it, and it's just like a like a cold. And then some people, get, I heard some people, it's just horrible. So. Yeah, yeah. I have like uh, it's this person. My cousin had it down in Florida, and she said it was like uh, shards of glass in her lungs every time she breathed. Wow, wow. Well, I don't have that. I just, I don't even have a cough. I just, you know, I think it's, I think it's the pollen. It's your, it's your dust, and your yeah, you got allergies. Well, I went and I vacuumed. I think I told you. I don't know if I told you last week or before we went on the air or whatever. But I went under the under the bed, where I don't think we've been since that bed was put in about five six years ago, and I took the attachment to my Dyson and I just dusted underneath the bed because I figure maybe I'm sleeping there all night. And when I wake up, yeah, I might. <laughs> you know, I'm like I I've like because dust mites supposedly are great allergen. You know? Yeah, and uh, if if there were dust mites in this house. They were having a happy fizzies party under my bed. <laughs> I would love to. You should have taken a picture of that. It must have been like three feet high. It was. It was. It was. It was there. You know, when you looked under, you could see a layer of of dust and dust balls and so on. So we just we just went under there and cleaned it all out, and it looks. It look, I think it's pretty good now. So maybe I'll, I won't have the same problem. I don't know. We'll see. You know. Um, 
But, uh, you know, the other thing is uh, that, uh, you know, I've got the, that problem. What was, there was one other thing that I was, I, I forgot what I was going to say. See? Uh, do you take any of these uh, allergy medicines at all? I do have some. Yeah, I don't take them a lot, but on a bad day, I, I do have. Do they some work? Drops you put in the nose, and then uh, some pills. Yeah. Do they work? Uh, they they help a little. The other thing I found that helps. Uh, I don't. I'm not big on the natural uh, healing things, but if you if you get some water and put cayenne pepper and a little lemon in there and mix it around, that seems to really help. What? What? You turn your no- nostrils into a salad? No, you just drink it. <laughs> oh, you drink it? Yeah, cayenne pepper, water, and a little lemon. Cayenne pepper and a little, little lemon. Hmm. Yeah, try it. It's a... Yeah. That means I have to go out and buy lemon, which means I have to go out there with all the people who aren't wearing masks in my neighborhood. Uh, that's right. You've, uh, you're not, you're not uh, versed to staying inside for days. Well, you know what? I tell you, I'm going to say something, folks. This is going to sound racist on the on the on the front of it but let me say first of all that i live in a predominantly black neighborhood harlem is a predominantly black neighborhood tradition and uh so the major amount of people i'm going to see when i go outside are, are are black so i'm making this assumption based on that but i have just been amazed at how many black people are not wearing masks uh now why do i find that terrible because black lives matter and don't wear a black lives matter t-shirt and then not wear a mask because if you consider the black lives matter that just doesn't doesn't apply to a cop with his knee on somebody's neck it also applies to you spreading the virus to other black people in your neighborhood does does that make sense yeah i didn't know uh that was is that I wonder now I don't know I'm not, if I were in a white neighborhood I might find the same percentage not where you know you go downtown and there are all those white kids in bars outside without masks on non social distancing mm-hmm. so I suppose if I lived down in that neighborhood I'd say you know what happens in my neighborhood all these white people don't wear masks you know but all I'm saying is I live in a black neighborhood and I agree black lives matter but if you believe that then you believe black lives matter even when it comes to wearing a mask and honoring that. Right. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. Yeah. So I'm not saying that all blacks don't wear, you know, I heard somewhere that blacks don't like to wear them because they're, they're afraid people will think they're going to rob them. You know, uh, I heard that as an excuse, but I don't buy that as an excuse. I just yeah, think, so yeah. This I didn't is, know you were so... What percentage of the neighborhood is black? I would say 75%. Okay, and it used to be probably... It, hasn't that been gentrified a little? That's the gentrification. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, but it's it's getting even more gentrified, and I would say, like, when I first moved into this apartment house, uh, we were about the only white people living in it. Wow. And uh, now I would say maybe a third of the of the apartment house is, is, uh, is um, white. Uh, and and the, and the reason the blacks are still here is because they all got grandfathered in with like rent control and rent stabilization, and so they can't be moved out. Okay. But you know, uh, uh, the landlord I'm sure would love to have nothing but white yeah. people in here paying you know seven thousand dollars a month. And how far are you from the Apollo Theater? About seven blocks. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the empty Apollo Theater? Yes. Well, everything's empty now, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, so uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, all I'm saying is, if black uh, to the black people in my neighborhood not wearing masks, if if uh, if Black Lives Matter, that should apply to everything. It's like I always said about my fellow Jews: if the word not, "never again" applies to Jews, it should apply to everybody. You know. Right. And and uh, so when you do something that reminds me of uh, something Hitler might do because you're doing it to the uh, members of Islam, I'm saying you don't believe in never again. You believe in never again for us. You know, black lives matter for us. 
um, black lives matter, and that's the reason why I wear a mask when I go out, because I don't want my fellow black neighbors to catch whatever I might have, and I don't want to catch whatever they have. But not wearing one has, has become a political issue, and it shouldn't be a political issue. It's a social issue. Well, everything's a political issue now, so <laughs> just, yeah. you can't escape it. Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's a political issue, you know. So. Yeah, sure. Anyway. Hey, listen. Another another wonderful time spent with Larry Bubbles Brown. It just rolls by. Just rolls by like uh, like like the coronavirus. Well, I'll try to get back there so you can quarantine me for two weeks. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I got a great place for you to be quarantined. We'll, here. we'll watch 3D movies and Julie Adams. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, sorry for the uh, little problems at the beginning of the program, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but, uh, you know, we had a little problem there. Let me, I, I want to adjust my camera here. You know, you people who listen to the audio only, I guess, don't understand what I'm doing when I have problems and things like that, like we had at the beginning of the program tonight. Let me see here. Let me just uh, let me just brighten up my picture just a tad here, so that uh, it. Uh, there we go. There we are. Okay. There we go. Okay. Does that look better? All right. That looks better. Okay. See, the thing is that what happens is that during the days I have a problem where I um, maybe turn the machine off, turn the machine back on, turn the machine off, turn the machine back on, and in doing that, sometimes parameters change. And tonight, when we were trying to start off the show, the audio from the video didn't go on because, right, uh, something had changed and I didn't have any volume at all coming out of the uh, out of our uh, uh, thing here out of our uh, machine so anyway whatever you don't need to know how this I, why do I explain these things when you don't know what I went through and I can't explain them well because I'm getting older and I forget the exact words to use to make something work. the volume wasn't up okay all right anyway we're gonna go play uh, uh, with our uh, our citizens panel, and we already got two people who we are admitting to the citizen yeah. panel. There sure they go. Uh, somebody's got their audio up, but I think they're probably going about to turn it down, I would imagine. Hello, Howard. Hello, Charlie. Hi. How are you? Awesome. Yeah. How's things in Hawaii? You're kind of distant from this whole coronavirus deal, right? We're doing good. Yeah, and uh, Charlie's right in the midst of it. He's in the... That's a new uh, record today. A new record? What was it today? Uh, it was... Uh, well, the whole, the whole uh, country set a record of 64,000-something uh -huh. new cases today. And Texas and was the, was what? Austin you know? set a new record of 753. That's the most they've had in any one day. Do you know in all of New York City, which is... Uh, new York State, which is a huge state, okay, we have... How many millions of people do we have? 18 million in New York City alone, alone I think. Alone, yeah. Uh, and then I think, I don't know, something like maybe 30 million, I don't know, in the state. Much more than you have in Austin, Texas. We only had 850 cases today. Yeah, see? That's because you have a smart governor. Yes, yes. <laughs> and our death rate was down to eight today. And, um, oh, people on ventilators was under 100. So, good, good, for, huh? good for us. Yeah, you know, doing good. Good for New York. Um, so, uh, you know, but you know what I heard uh, today on the news? Um, is it Shanghai or Hong Kong? Might be Hong Kong. Uh, is oh, I know it's Hong Kong. Yeah, because Marjorie was was got a letter from one of her compatriots in her company from Hong Kong saying that uh, they're in their third wave now. The third wave has hit. Wow. Okay. Now, I, sometimes, you know, it could be argued whether it's a third wave or it is a, 
Uh, what do I, you know what I still have up? Hold on a second. I got to get rid of something here. A moment. Uh, b -b -b Zoom panel. I got to get rid of that royal that full house, full house I have up. I have the full house up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have one soon. We'll have one. Well, maybe so not. Up. Maybe not. Nobody seems to be calling yet. Anyway. So um, um, uh, it's supposedly, you know, sometimes they say people say it's a third wave or it's a second wave. A lot of times what people are calling a second wave here in the United States is not a second wave. It's still part of the first wave. It's just we reinfected ourselves. And that's what's happened to you in Texas. I mean, yeah. you know, my heart goes out to you, you know. And you're, you're, you're in the hot spot, right? Yeah, all the hospitals are full. Really? I don't know what they're going to do if, if these cases keep going up. And, and how's your governor explaining his, his behavior in all of this? He had not said anything all week. He's been pretty quiet about it. What about that yeah. uh, Dan Patrick, your uh, lieutenant governor? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, they, they really haven't said much since, uh, like, Monday, I think, was the last time they said anything. Yeah, why don't we just call him Governor Shit for Brains, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, they're going to open up. They're going to make the schools go back because they're going to do whatever Trump tells them to do. Well, you know, the the youngsters, the young'uns, uh, aren't as um, susceptible for danger as the adults. But as I said last night, how many of you have kids? They, people raise their hands. And I said, how many of you have had your kids bring home stuff from school? You know, a cold, a flu, whatever. And they all raise their hands. So, you know, these kids could maybe not be in any real danger. They could even be asymptomatic, but they come back home and mm -hmm. grandma and grandpa come by and goodbye grandma and grandpa and what about the teachers and what about the, the teachers? teachers aren't kids <laughs> and are you going to get teachers who want to teach in schools in this kind of yeah. situation you know Ooh. i mean i understand a a doctor or a nurse or a health worker wanting to go to a hospital because that's what they do and <laughs> you know uh they know the dangers inherent in the job that they do and so they, they, they won't stay away. But teachers can go, hey, I can teach this from home, okay? I can teach these students from home, and I'm not going to take the chance of getting this. So, you know, that's the, uh, that's the sum total of it. Plus kids touch their face. They touch everything. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it, kids, it's really good for kids to go to school and get all those little diseases and colds and things like that because they build immunities to them, right? You know, but um, uh, in this case, we're dealing with an entirely different, uh, this is, somebody calls himself Juan Biden, but I do think it's probably... Um, uh, John Larkin. Uh, John yeah, Larkin. Larkin yeah. Uh, hold on a second, it says joining. There we go. Oh, oh no. no, it's Phil. <laughs> it's Phil. It's Phil. Uh, you're, you're, who are you tonight? You're uh, Juan Biden. Yeah. You know, nice. I'm looking for the Spanish vote. You're looking for the Spanish vote, are you? Really? Okay. Yeah, no more Joe, but now it's Juan. Juan. Okay. Wouldn't that be Jose? Yeah, it would be Jose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But, close enough. But No, it's not close enough. Starts with J. No, but it's uh, Juan is a completely different name. What's the American name for Juan? Anybody know? John. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no John Biden running, but it would be a Jose Biden yeah. running. So, is that your attempt at humor tonight? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Carlos. I, I heard that speech that Biden made today. Uh, yeah. You know, he's going to get uh, brought up on. Pro plagiarism charges again because it looks like he plagiarized Trump's platform uh, the way he <laughs> plagiarized that guy in England you know uh, in 88 why would he want to plagiarize Trump's platform uh, he was saying I'm going to bring back uh, uh, manufacturing for the United States uh, we're going to buy everything here we're going to make it here we're not going to buy anything from China I, I, I swear he sounded like Trump except he was shorter well, well I, 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 th I, I think the problem with that I didn't hear the speech but if that's what he said the problem with that is the notion 
that we are be going to become a, um, a manufacturing power in the world is wrong. We are no longer, that is no longer our place in the world. Well, okay. that was his plagiarized position today. Well, you call uh, it if, plagiarized. If it. Phil, Phil, Phil. Then you could say that Trump plagiarized Bush and plagiarized Obama and plagiarized, and because it, it plagiarized, very definitely plagiarized Reagan. Yeah. You know, so don't don't say that Joe Biden plagiarized Trump. Come on. Is that a whataboutism that I just got hit with? No, it isn't oh, a whataboutism. What I'm saying is, is that other people were also plagiarists as well in that respect. Yeah. But Everybody who runs for president says they're going to bring the, bring the jobs back to America. We're going to start doing manufacturing here. Every last one of them. But Joe Biden is a... Uh, oh, we're a, we're into it already. Problem. I thought at least we could have 15 minutes of peace and quiet. All right, I'll call back. <laughs> no, it, you, know. you can't plagiarize something that's out in the public domain. Yeah. No, no, no. no. It's, it, this is not his position, but he said it was today, trying to get those voters and then you know he had that deal with well, every uh, everybody Kansas. everybody who run you know it, it's that everybody who runs for president you know it's a chicken in every pot right you know yeah, it's, it's a, two chickens in every pot. And, and you go around kissing babies now this is individual zero and of course that's john larkin okay i yeah. figured it'd be john <laughs> you, you know if joe biden actually stood for the things that he talked about today There'd be no reason not to vote for How him. How do you know he doesn't stand for them? Because he's he's being so. Uh, oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if, if he you know, did, you know, well, maybe he does. So, I don't think so. Yeah, at least he's a decently decent moral human being. Instead of remember? instead of grabbing women's pussies. Yeah, well, he does something. Else. Oh, yeah, he smells kids' hair. Yeah, well, that's that's not in the same league with he grabbing a woman by the pussy. Feels wives, huh? He fills up people's wives, and you know, he kind of a curve. Oh, what was that? What more than kind of? Hmm. He doesn't pay off porn stars. What? He would he if he had the money. Porn stars. Yeah. Did you see his body language today when? Uh, after the Supreme Court came down, he's like, every time, you know, when his back's up against the wall and shit's about to... He yeah, does his he Mussolini. He does his... Yeah, I call yeah. it the Mussolini. <laughs> Actually, I think it was a win for Trump in, in, oh. in oh my multiple God. ways. Well, they're not going to be able to get his taxes before the election. And, uh, and even if they do, they have to meet four points... Uh, to determine that they actually need them, and this is not a specious argument or a, uh, a witch hunt. Uh, well, so, that's the congressional one. The congressional one will probably drag on because he'll he'll drag it out. But the the state criminal one, where he's all, it, 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 where he is in, noted individual one uh, in, in the Stormy Daniels hmm. affair, uh, that will definitely. Um, come up and it, even if the tax returns they don't get the tax returns before the election after the election they will prosecute him let and me ask you John, do yeah. you think that he wrote off a uh, a payment to stormy daniels no, uh, he, i don't know if yes, he, he did did he write it off to her or did he write it off to uh, his uh, his no, pal his I, you know what they're looking for is to see if he wrote off on his taxes this to try and, and embarrass him but you know, I mean, if you're going to do something like that, I, I, I'd i be surprised if you try well, to write it off on your taxes. It's an illegal campaign contribution, too. So there's no, he there's paid about Michael, three different laws. He paid his attorney. No, it's an illegal. It's an illegal. Uh, uh, it's it's it can be considered a, uh, a what do you call it, a donation. Campaign oh, okay. contribution. Campaign but contribution. I, th I thought he paid that money to his uh, fixer attorney. Well, that would still be, you know, if it was, it would, yeah, it, legal fees. But but they proved they they have proof that it was, you know, they, you know that that uh, it was paid because his fixer paid her off. So you that was just payback to the fixer. Maybe, uh, you know, I mean, what else could it be? Phil, I mean, you know, how long? How long are you going to keep defending this piece of shit? Least how long, years. how long, how long, Phil, are you going to allow yourself to sit there and look like a raving fucking idiot? 
at least four more years. Really? His, <laughs> his next term. But I don't I think so. I, I wish I could tip plays a bet. I don't think so. I think he's made, you know, between failing in this uh, coronavirus deal mm -hmm. and the economy the way it is now and uh, all his actions of over the last couple of years, I think he's lost a lot of the people who voted for him. Okay? I think so. Well, you don't think so, but you can't, uh, you can't say that, it, uh, that there isn't a good shot of that. It's a shot of anything. You're, you're mean, assuming that all America is as stupid as you are. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I think it's you guys that your elevator only goes up to your nose and, uh, and that the rest of America knows what they're doing. Well, I'll tell you, I came up with something the other day, you know, because I'm not, I don't like to be consistently on one side of things, okay, because I don't think you're examining uh, what's going on. Lights dim when the air conditioner changes. Um, but I, it, it, um, uh, but the other day I was thinking about it and there's this, uh, this uh, book by Trump's niece. Okay. Mary. Mary. Is that her name? Mary, 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 the niece. And I was watching MSNBC, and they were spending the whole day on this book, and what was in this book, and what was being said in this book. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that isn't really objective journalism because this is, a, is, is an opinion piece written by a Trump family member in which she's got all kinds of dirt on him and so on, or alleged dirt. But we don't know that it's exactly... Can, can I finish, Phil? God damn it. I'm on your side on this one, okay? Yeah. Uh, what bothered me was the fact that MSNBC was like going to town on this deal. And all it is is an opinion book, okay? It's a tell-all by somebody who obviously didn't like Donald Trump all that much and had a lot against him, okay? So I, while I, I hope and pray that everything they say, she said in the book is absolutely true, on the other hand, I think it was wrong of MSNBC to put it on the air as gospel truth. Okay? Anybody well, disagree with me on that one? Phil, I'll, go I'll, ahead. I'll, disagree I'll, with yeah. me on it. Yes, I'll, yes, John. M MSNBC is not necessarily journalism, just like Fox, you know? It's, yeah. It's more opinion than... Real well, it, it, part of, and remember, it, be, before MSNBC, there was no, there was no, you know, viable liberal, you know, opinion on TV. It was just all Rush Limbaugh and and Fox. Well, but it you got to understand, you got to understand that 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 the shows that these appeared on, that this appeared on a lot, uh, were shows which are passed off as being newscasts. At night, those are opinion shows. During the day, it's supposedly news shows. And they were like, oh, every little rumor she put in this book and everything. And, oh, uh, what if he did this and he did that? And I'm going, you know, where's the objectivity here? Where is them saying she alleges? <laughs> okay? I don't think they even use that term. And that's what bothers me. I mean, that's why I'm watching more and more of CNN. Is because at least I find that they, you know, they, they, they have some kind of balance going on there. Um uh, Anybody disagree with me on what I said? Well, I, when I was going to interrupt you earlier... Uh, Interrupting was, was a good way to describe it, Phil. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, or, or talk over you. Uh, the, uh, Mary Trump has a, has a beef with her grandfather, Fred Trump, and is mad that she didn't get the inheritance that she thought she was due. Yeah, and we, we, and, we, and we know that as a fact. That's why I'm saying that they, they should have treated this more as, uh, you know, right. as, as uh, uh, an, an opinion piece rather than as gospel truth, you know. Yeah, or somebody with a grudge. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know that she had a grudge. I think anybody who knows Trump personally probably has a grudge against him and has a right to. I think she got cheated on that inheritance, and she's, gonna, uh, she's yeah. got grounds to come back and sue. You know, you know, as long as they get something, uh, uh, the, a lot of times they they'll give, uh, they'll give somebody yeah. five thousand dollars just to say, you know, you were you weren't you were forgotten, right? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know they they do that now. Just back from his colonoscopy. Uh, mm. The drugs it's, were good, Alex. You're right. It, it, it's, <laughs> I was worried. I was. Wor I had a little, 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 little polyp. Very to God, doctor. There's nothing at all. I just it took it right out. A little, little, little polyp. That's what he said. I was worried, Alex. I was a little scared because I never got put under. But you got to go back in three years. I think he said a three or four or five. He's got to tell me. Probably yeah. three. Yeah, he's probably going to. But anyway, did you get put under? Yeah, Alex. It was weird. Listen to this. So they they I beat me. Oh God, I that needle. I, I don't like taking a needle. So I was like, oh. I looked away, and then the anesthesiologist came over and so I said, listen, I he said, got any questions? He says, yeah. I said, I never really went on to before. He says, don't worry about it. He says, you'll have a great ride. I says, a great <laughs> ride. I'm saying to myself, I'm thinking of you. There right is. Now. I don't know I if you. Think. I don't know if you yeah. notice it, but there's a moment before you go completely under that you get this kind of flash of the drug. I want to tell you what and happened. And it right? it's a wonderful little, it's a quick high. Marjorie goes for it every time because she wants that quick little high. And I say, that, that's a cheap thrill for you. They gave me the intravenous Valium or whatever uh, in, because they gave me a spinal. And I felt the high for about a half hour. All right. Oh, my God. So listen to this. I thought of you because I remember you saying it was quick. So when they said, okay, mm -hmm. roll over like like that mm -hmm. and they leave my other arm out. So yeah. I was rolling over, I guess, to get to my ass, right? Right. And then they didn't want me to say, she goes, are you feeling drowsy? She says, no. And I was worried, like, oh, God, I hope I see my mom. <laughs> this is it, Johnny. I said, I was going to ask her where they went to college, but I figured they would put me at ease. She says, you feel anything? I says, no. Nah. She says, how about now? And then all I remember, boom, it went black. And I, re I actually remember a dream I had. I was, like, playing basketball as a kid. Really? You, you had, got it, had a dream? I, I had a dream. I remember playing basketball. God, I, the next thing I, I remember is the guy looking at me and saying, well, yes. it's through. It's over. Yeah, Dr. Pfeiffer came over, and he says, Tony, how you doing? I says, Dr. Pfeiffer? He says, it's all done. He says, you had a little thing. Everything's good. I called your brothers in the waiting room. You're good. He says, so he's talking to me. I said, all right. He says, and that's it? Yeah, they're going to come over with some cookies and juice. I had some cookies and juice. And look what they gave me. He gave me extra socks to NYU. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah. Oh, are these the, are the, oh, those are the, yeah, those are the ones it with the non skid socks. bottom. Yeah. 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 My mother's was never wear. Yeah. Those are terrible on hardwood those. floors. You can't slide. Yeah. I gave her a pass so she doesn't kill herself. But I mean, I was, I was scared, Alex. I was. But you're right. The drug, oh my God. It just went totally like, like, 30 minutes of me was gone. Wow. Well, now, when you smoke pot, get on the air and... Uh, what kind of drug? What is that drug he's giving me then? Do you know what that is? It's probably probably propofol. That's the thing that yeah. killed Michael Jackson. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, but, if he, he, nice but he, he was taking it recreationally. You don't do that drug recreationally. So how did they wake him up, Michael Jackson? I was going to ask They you. didn't. They, they, they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> oh. What do you think? So the doctor puts him under, and then how do you get him out of it, though? Oh, you know, you, you, I thought there was a doctor there all night. Like when when, when it's going in, and it stays in, you you're out. And the minute they stop it, you wake up. Yep. Oh, so he his kept going in, or he got too much of a hit? Well, he just I don't know. He died from it. Yeah. yeah he, he, he OD. Oh, God, I'm never I think he administered it to himself. No, he was he, his own doctor. He had, his, doctor. he had his own doctor, but I don't know if the doctor did it or he just put it in his arm and yeah. But I did have a dream though. I was I was dreaming I was playing basketball in the park. I was younger, and then, and then I woke my eyes woke up like that, and he was the doctor was right there. He's telling me this is Dr. Marjorie Marjorie is obviously awake right now because she says mm -hmm. I tell the doctor to go in slowly. Well, dear, I think that's grounds for divorce. <laughs> I was I was scared. I said, oh God, this is it, Johnny. I'm going. I said, what yeah. a way to go. Yeah, he, she tells him, put it in slowly. Yeah. Right. Oh. Well, you know, I wish you would ask me the same thing, dear. Anyway. Okay, but everything's good. God, I'm having sinus headache for the last couple of days. Alex, the heat was horrible today. I was walking with my sister before. Oh, yeah. the humidity. I, 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 had, I wanted to go out and walk, and I looked at the temperature, uh, and it said uh, 90 degrees, going. and I went, that's ridiculous. And tomorrow, we're going to have a tropical storm. Yeah. That's going to be like two inches of rain. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and, uh, you know, it's not going to be like, 
You know, every day is very nice where Howard lives. Look at that. It never changes. It's, it's Hawaii looks to die for. It's always is there. The, is the temperature warm? It's about 90 warm, today. Alex? About 90 degrees. Is no, I'm saying, Alex, this, the storm that's coming through, is it warmer? Oh. I, I think it's going to get cold. It's going to get cooler tomorrow. It's going to be in the 70s. Oh, okay. So, you know, but I want to, I, but tomorrow would be perfect for me to go out and walk, but then it's a tropical storm. So, you know. I'm feeling I'm a little feeling better, but I have a sinus headache now. Oh, right over the eyes, right? Yeah, right here. I get that too when it gets the humidity. It bothers me. Is it, is the humidity? Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, but I, today I was feeling, I've been feeling better than I have been. So, you know. It was in the mid 90s here today, and <laughs> currently it's 84. Thank you very much. Yeah, like What's the weather going to be tomorrow? He's like, and is there going to be a front coming down from the north? <laughs> one. We should get you a weather map, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. I, I, I've got yeah, like, what? What, uh, Howard? I got a box of baby chicks in the mail today. Baby chicks? Baby chicks? The, uh, they were what? hatched July 6th in Iowa, put in the mail, and they came to Maui and arrived this morning. Why well, did they, you do I that? Because I wanted baby chicks. But they're Aren't not they going to be baby chicks much longer. They're going to be big, ugly mm -hmm. chickens. They're, well, you're right. And, and, I, ha and I raise them dinner. for eggs. I don't eat my birds, but I do raise them for eggs. For they eggs. Are. Okay. We're, but you don't, raise the, you don't raise them for dinner? Um, they're calling you right now. Yeah, the, your chickens are, are available. Operators are standing by. Here we go. Chickens yeah. are coming oh. through. <laughs> Uh, there's a place called McKenna, and they uh, about two towns below Howardstown, and they've got all these roosters. See, uh, there he goes. Roosters. Another once again, he's bragging he's been to Hawaii. Every yeah, night he what? does McKenna. it. McKenna. Every it's night he does it. Like I know something about Hawaii. I know where there's a chicken store in Hawaii. Yeah. So Howard, uh, you, you've seen the roosters in McKenna over by McKenna Landing. Yes, the wild chickens. Yes. Yeah. Are they roosters? Ch chickens? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, they're, They're all over the place. Let me let me let me let me, let me let me let me toss stop. Phil Howard. Is there still a radio station in in uh, Honolulu called uh, um, uh, KULA? 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 Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. Because there what... was KPOI and KAOI. Yeah. Well, KPOI was around when I was there, but I was at Kula. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Alex is bragging again at all the stations he used to work yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll like, tell you. I'll tell you wait. what happened. I'll tell you what happened to me though. There is a thing, and you know it as well as anybody, Howard, called island fever. Yeah. And what happens is you go to Hawaii, and I was went there to work for like a month uh, because my boss sent me over there to set up the radio station, and uh, I uh, I was there about four days, something like that. And by about the fourth or fifth day, they found me in the reception area, sitting in a chair, dazed. What happened? Island fever. It's a, it's a thing you, am I right? It's a thing you get because everything is so, the breezes and the palm trees and the waves and the humidity, the, the heat and so on and so forth. You get a thing called island fever. You go into a coma for about two days. Oh two or three God. days. And they literally, they were laughing their heads off. They said, ah, well, it hit. You know, it hit. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, uh, I just sat there for the rest of the day going, Duh. Yeah. And uh, uh, a couple Marjorie, of... Marjorie, uh, pretty funny tonight. What's she, she, she saying? She apartment fever. Night, night, everyone. I have apartment fever. <laughs> oh, okay. There you uh, go. Because he took it constantly as oh, a sleeping. He's home. Oh, that was a, a, she was talking about. Oh, you got your ukulele, right? I think it's the Yeah, like this little strumming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, d d d d do you play it well? Do we establish it? Or do you play it terribly? Oh, I, I just uh, just learning. Just learning. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, I, I'm, it's kind of a, uh, I'm kind of a. I'm kind of a. Since I've been locked in here, I've been kind of uh, going crazy over all these YouTube music lessons, you know? Mm -hmm. so like I, I, bought, I bought a ukulele to learn how to play. Then uh, I bought a, I bought a uh, uh, clarinet from a pawn shop. Yeah. I just sit there and I watch those lessons and try to, try to learn how to play. Mm. I never was a musician, though. 
Yeah, I've been I become addicted to YouTube. Oh, I yeah. love YouTube. I look for all new stuff. What? I watch any like anything like uh, news clips and stuff like that. Forget that. I've been watching. Uh, today I watched two and a half hours of David Letterman, everything he ever said or did about Paul Newman. Yeah. Mm. Oh, really? Paul Newman, why? Why Paul Newman? But I don't know. They made this whole two and a half hour thing of every time he ever talked about Paul Newman, told <laughs> a story about Paul Newman, had Paul Newman on the show. You know. So. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw Michael Landon's last interview on Johnny Carson. That you know, when you when you watch YouTube, those are the yeah. Kinds well, I of saw things. today. I was watching uh, 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 Frank Sinatra's last interview with uh, Larry King. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I like the I like the old Carson stuff. I like yeah. seeing maybe it's stupid. I like the Don Rickles stuff, and oh, especially yeah. when Sinatra was on. Mm -hmm. When he kissed so those right? Yeah, just nonstop. Yeah. I, I like the old Dick Cavett interviews with like, uh, you know, with like Marlon Brando and, you know, just all kinds of weirdos. And that one with it, wasn't there one where they got in a fight? Uh, they had like Jim Brown and uh, some racist governor of Alabama. And uh, uh, Dick Cavett asked the governor, he said, Are, is everybody a racist in your state or something? <laughs> <laughs> And it, oh, and, and, and it was Truman Capote, too. It was Jim Brown, Truman Capote, and, and the racist uh, governor. <laughs> wow. Well, I, 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 on Amazon Prime, they have a whole bunch of old Cavett shows. Yeah. Uh, I, and they have the dates on them and everything. And you get to see them kind of, you know. I saw real early. You know what I saw? I saw Isaac Asimov mm -hmm. being interviewed being interviewed by David Letterman on the David Letterman morning show. Do you remember he had a morning show on yeah. NBC? I don't remember that. I the Weatherman if, before that, right? But yeah, yeah. For a guy yeah, for a guy who turned out well actually he had done he was uh, on the Mary Tyler Moore show, the variety hour. Oh wow. And uh, what else? Did he do something else? I'm trying to think. Well, but he did stand up but, for a while. But he did stand up for a while. But anyway, uh, I think that Letterman turned out to be one of the best interviewers oh, alive, yeah. okay? In that morning show, he mm -hmm. was so terrible. Really? It was unbelievable. <laughs> wow. I mean, this interview with... It, it, I often said that the biggest problem with people when they interview, and if I gave a master class on interviewing, I would, this would be my prime thing to tell people is when you're interviewing somebody, the biggest mistake you can make is that you can ask them a question and while they're answering it, you're thinking of what the next question is going to be. And that's mm -hmm. a bad idea because then he could say something and then you follow it up with some question you've either written down or just thought up while and not even listening to his answer. What you do is you listen. You ask a question, you listen to the answer, and then you do the natural thing. You ask a question based on the reply. He right. didn't know that at this point, and he was just asking a series of questions. And, why, and, and the funny part about it is I didn't realize Asimov, I think, had a New York accent. Yeah. And, and he was very much a New Yorker and very funny. But Letterman didn't give him the ability to be funny. You know, he only did it to a certain extent, and then Letterman kept saying, Andy, what well, do you think we're ever going to go to Mars, and blah, 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 blah. And, but uh, Asimov was amazing to listen to, you know. Did Susan, your third, uh, do a paper on Asimov or, or something to that effect? No. No? I thought she, she told me that. No. Huh? No, right. not on Isaac Asimov. I don't even think she was a fan of Isaac Asimov's. Okay, well, I, I have all 139 of his novels. Really? He was good. Oh, yeah. He was good. He, he came up with what I think is the classic, and that is The Laws of Robotics, which okay. is rule. No Do you remember The Laws of Robotics? I think I, think I read about it somewhere. Number one is. Um, 
can't hurt another human being. You can't hurt another human being. And then the second law of robotics is... You have to follow the orders of a human being unless it harms another human being. Unless it harms another human being, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, but it, the third it, one, what was the I don't, I don't, well, let me see if I can find it here. I'll look it up. Uh, th three laws of robotics. Of robotics. It's got to just come right up. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, three laws of robotics, Isaac Asimov. Okay. Wow, what are the right three on. laws of robotics? Uh, they are, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Yeah. A robot must obey the orders given it by a human being, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And what about the fourth one, which is the robot will take the human's job? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, here, here it is, by the way, in case, uh, in case yeah. anybody wants to see it. There you go, know. it's right there. Yeah. Three laws of robotics, right, right there, folks. So, in case you didn't know what the three, I often thought that was, brilliant in and of itself how many how many books he write 167 oh no he wrote he also wrote science facts books so he wrote over 500 books all together it's just oh his fiction was only 100 he wrote times. something an annotated bible yes he was talking about that yeah yeah uh he was he was bright and this interview was just it was terrific it was just terrific but Adam's guide to the bible it could have been better. It could have been better if Letterman was better at that point in his career. Uh, what I liked was his sensuous, dirty old man. Huh? <laughs> you know, they had all those sensuous man, sensuous woman yeah. books. He said this, he wrote a book called The Sensuous, Dirty Old Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the funniest was, shit. There were some talk show hosts in New York when I was a kid. That a guy with cigarettes. He, uh, uh, was it? Joe Franklin or no, Joe Pond? No, Joe Franklin didn't smoke. Oh, you're talking about Morton Downey Jr. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, there was a, a number of them that uh, had he, come and gone, but. Uh, he you know, stole his act from a guy named Wally George. I liked Wally George. His daughter yeah. is Rebecca De Mornay. And, Wa yeah, Wa yeah. and Wally George stole his uh, act from Joe Pine. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, Wally George isn't still alive, is he? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. I think he smoked himself to death. Yeah, he was. He was. I, I didn't think he was that good, actually. No. To be honest with you, Joe he Pine was, a, was terrific, shock though. Guy, Joe, you know? Joe Pine was terrific. Yeah, there was a lot of shock value for Wally George. This was the days where you had guys like Joe Pine who were the kind of you could call conservative talk show hosts and nasty and mean and all of that. But the fact was that. You, you, you still liked him, you know, because he was entertaining. Uh, and that's when talk shows were entertainment. Now they're just, you know, bloviating. I mean, Hannity yeah. is just horrible, just terrible. Yeah, I, can't, I can't sit to that guy. Or Herr uh, Carlson. Somebody here mentioned Alan Burke. Gee, I'm surprised anybody even remembers oh, Alan wow. Burke. Uh, oh. and, 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 and they mentioned Tom Snyder. Uh, who uh, was okay, uh, but anyway, th th you know. So anyway, uh, so that was my whole talk show thing about MSNBC and how I felt they were, you know. I just wish there were a channel that were a little more even-handed, you know, uh, and didn't feel it had to necessarily have a position where where maybe you had a right winger on one hour and the next hour you had on a real lefty. Uh, how about RT? Huh? RT. You know, I, I always thought that, you know, they, they weren't bad. They gave you kind of a... They were the you know, fucking Russians' propaganda. Well, it, yeah, it, you would like them, Phil. I do. I, I do. No, I, I, you know, I just think that uh, what, what happened, used to happen with talk shows in the old days, we would have a talk station, okay? Mm -hmm. And I was on it, and then I was followed by, uh, oh, I don't know, a real right winger. Uh, what's his name? Here in New York. Um, and and between shows and the crossover between the shows, we'd argue with each other. And then he'd go do his right wing show, and I did my left wing show. And 
Then there was another guy was somewhere in the middle, and uh, it gave you a well-rounded kind of uh, kind of a station. Uh, and um, it, 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 it we we could we could stand to have that these days. Hey, Alex, can I ask you a question? Sure. Would would this would you have taken this job if say if one of the radio stations would have came up and said, Alex, we'd like to pair you with. I'm going to say it. Say Sean Hannity has a two-man team going against you. That might be interesting on the. Well, the I would I, I would do it if I wasn't if I wasn't being set up as a sacrificial lamb like so have have like Alan Combs, like Alan Combs no. was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Alan Combs was set up as a sacrificial lamb for Hannity, and I always felt sorry for Alan because he had a thankless job. Because on one hand. Um, he was there and at least speaking our cause, okay? But on the other hand, all the people he was speaking for were like assailing him. How can you be on Fox? <laughs> well, you know, to my way of thinking, the place you want to be is Fox. I mean, I used to be on once a week yeah, with, 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 yeah. uh, with what's his Tucker. name? Tucker. With Tucker Carlson when he was at MSNBC. He used to be on every week with him. And uh, Tucker treated me very well, as a matter of fact, uh, you know. But, I mean, you say, well, how could you go on the Tucker Carlson show? And my answer is, how could you stay away from the Tucker Carlson show if you want to get your point across to an audience that isn't necessarily receptive to what you say, but maybe you might strike home with a few of them, you know. Um, and it's actually interesting because it's a good contrast. I think he's would be good polar opposites. Well, so no, I kind of, would never want to work with Sean Hannity. You know, want to strike and, him. I mean, he's just a he. He was he's just a horrible person. Just I a don't horrible person. Want to share the uh, stage with anybody? What? Yeah, I don't think Sean Hannity is is oh, the type true. that wants to share his platform. Oh well, after we did we did a debate with each other on Alan Combs' radio show, uh -huh. and after it was over, he said to Alan, "Never put me on with him again." Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I got to him. I got really? to him. What did you say that uh, elicited that kind he of... He started going into a rant and a rave, and I just said, come on, Sean, you know, we're, both, we're just in show business. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in show business. No, nah, how dare you say, hey, come on, that's what we do. We're in show business. It's all for show. Yeah. And no, it's not with me. <laughs> and then when we went to commercial break... And he was talking privately to Combs. He's never put me on with him again. I mean, you're right. I mean, I don't mean it to be, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but it would be funny if you would have told him, Sean, would you do the show if they weren't paying you? Come on, you think he'd show up and fight for Fox like that? If they were yeah. saying, you know what? Would what, he just stay on for $1.50 a week on principles so he could get his principles yeah. across? No, not at, at all. At least you're being honest. I mean, I understand you have your politics. But you were an entertainer. Hey, uh, hey, I, I, you know, um, uh, I'm I'm not going to show up for nothing. You know, no, I don't blame you. I'd be aging like, no, you're not going on. You got to get paid. You know, I believe in what I believe in, but I ain't going to do it for free. Although I did it for a while, it's serious to get the job. But you know, uh, it wasn't because I wanted to get my point across. What Fox hosts do you think don't believe in their position? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, I, I I don't think I don't think any of them really I think all they know is that if they do this they've got a job at Fox if tomorrow Sean let's say if tomorrow Tucker he's not a stupid guy he's not a you know I mean I like Tucker quite frankly I mean he he, he handled, handled me nicely he was good to me uh, Tucker uh is uh, like, uh, um, let's say he tomorrow decided that uh, Trump was an asshole and he was just going to start taking off after Trump. Mm -hmm. How long do you think he would last at Fox? That would be good. I don't know. See? No. And, and that's the point. That's the point I'm making, that he this should have that, that latitude to be able to be critical of Trump. There's a yeah. guy there, Neil Cavuto. And people hate him. He's a, he's a financial terrible. guy. I've, I've worked with him. I, they I, hate I, I him. did his show. He's an asshole. But they hate him because he doesn't support Trump. He goes Neil after Neil Cavuto? Yeah. Cavuto? Is, is he the guy I'm thinking of? Yeah, he's, he's the guy I'm the thinking of. Guy. He's not the big oh. black guy, Charles Payne. 
no, 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 no. no. He, Neil Cavuto, he's he's a business guy. Neil Cavuto is guy. not a black guy. No, uh, that's what I said. I thought you maybe were thinking of Charles Payne, but it, it's not Charles Payne. Neil Cavuto is in that same financial. Uh, I found him. I've always found him a suck up to Trump. Well, he's not now. Well, he uh, every time I tune in, he is. I don't think Maybe so. you got the wrong guy. Yeah. By the way, by the way, just for all of you, uh, Shepard Smith is yeah. going over to CNBC. I heard him Squawk Box here this morning. Yeah, yeah he's going to have a evening show. Yeah, uh, that's good. They say that he's going to kind of be even-handed. They're going to be even-handed with that yeah. show. Yeah, you know. Shepard. I always liked Shepard Smith. I always thought Shep was good. Shep didn't take crap from Fox at all. No, he would no. just call shots like he saw him. Yeah. And he wasn't left. He wasn't right. He was reasonable. Did you hear, <laughs> you did you hear, did you hear about that uh, that guy, Joe Henry? He's a real Trump butt kisser. He he just got busted for perving out on some some broad at. Uh, Joe they Henry. fired him on Fox for sexual harassment. You know the guy. I know. He, yeah. Joe Henry. He's like he's just with this. That smirky looking motherfucker, and he's always talking about whenever he's talking about Trump, and he's just a, a Trump ass kisser. Hmm. You know who he is, Phil. Joe no, Henry. I don't. I, I, I don't. On Fox. Well, it he, doesn't, doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, he's not, not Qua- on Fox anymore. How about Quasimodo? Does he ring a bell? Yes. <laughs> he's the bell ringer. Fine. Why am I so ugly? <laughs> That's one of his quotes, you know, when they were stoning him with the. Stuff on there. Well, anyway, uh, so you know, I mean, uh, but we're um, we got a real problem. You know, who was it said to me tonight? I think it was, it was Marjorie who was talking to a, you know, writing back and forth to a, a associate in Hong Kong, and the woman just said, "This whole world is just falling apart." She said, "Hong Kong is in terrible straits right now." So it's true co- what we see in the news? You know, I mean, the, the crackdown and all of those things? Because sometimes well, you think these things are... Oh, no, no, oh, no, oh, no, that's it, it, happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, not good, uh, although this person said that it was, it was oddly enough, and I don't... Marjorie's going to ask her why she said that, but she said that the crackdown was going to be good for business, for all the business people in Hong Kong. Now, I don't know what that means... Unless what she's saying is that by cracking down, people are going to feel a little safer coming back to Hong Kong to do business. That could be the answer. Uh, I thought they're taking rights away from them. Well, yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think is, you know, in the end, I think it's going to come back to bite them in the <coughs> ass. Uh, because... I'm the China. China. Because, yeah. you know, I mean... Let's face it, Hong Kong's a cash cow for them. You know, it's one of the biggest uh, capitalist markets in the world. And uh, to try and shut it down is really stupid. That's like saying, hey, you know, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna take... Another yeah. time when I think of the scorpion and the frog uh, uh, thing, uh, it, it's like China just is saying... Hey, you know, it may be a cash cow, but I'm still a scorpion, and that's what I do. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think that's the case. I think the case is that the Chinese government um, uh, has to assert its power because it's the only way they've known to run the country. Uh, and they have not been able to emotionally uh, grasp the whole idea of the capitalistic system in China, although it's been very good to China. Um, oh. Like so you know, but uh, but anyway, um, uh, they you know she just said uh, in her note to Marjorie, he said the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket, you know, and it's true, the whole world is collapsing <laughs> around us. This is bad. This is as bad as times get. This is approaching apocalyptic. Yeah, we're, we're having a big problem right now because we have money, we have funds from from our our big company Mm -hmm. and we're trying to open up these new plants you know india china and then even our local ones but the indian one and china one we're ready to travel over there and we want to deliver the machines and all the stuff 
and we have to do training for people to run the machines mm -hmm. and we're just going to have a huge a big problem because we can't even travel india is all shut down we don't know when they're going to come back and let people in and then same you know china's not nobody's letting anybody from the us in and here we are trying to save you know save the world and we're going to have a hard time we're starting to do videos and video clips of repetitive things just to get things going over there it's going to yeah. be really bad for us i've got the uh let's see here i've got the uh the full house thing up are we a full house phil uh, uh no no oh, okay well hey. uh, i'll get rid of it then i'm sorry i'm sorry folks i i advertise falsely but you know i'm only taking after our president um hey. the the um uh it, it, the world is it, everything is getting bad because corona is the is the the linchpin on this whole thing right now um we have had for instance a lot of murders here in new york city for a city where the murder rate has gone down to almost nothing okay uh shootings are up and it's all what i said when this whole thing started i said i don't want to be around when summer comes or spring comes and people go outside and they kind of are released a little bit from this self-imposed quarantine because they're going to go crazy. And that's exactly what they've done everywhere. I mean, if you go to, you know, I mean, you talk about Austin, Texas. How many uh, uh, events have there been in Austin, Texas, Charlie, that uh, spread the coronavirus? Because people just went, wee, it's spring. I'm yeah, going to be stupid. Yeah, the bars are packed. Open, over here. open up the bars, all of that, and it's it's just uh, the people have gone crazy. They've gone nuts. You don't, you don't think that there's an organized group, no like Lives Matter, that uh, no. are no. funded no. by no. Uh, uh, by no. people that want to blow up society? Oh, are you are you talking no. about? Oh, uh, that's the Zoros. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, are you talking about uh, yeah. what is it, uh, a FIDA or whatever that's called? Uh, Antiva. Uh, Antiva. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I'm talking about Black Lives Matter. No, because they I don't. Th I don't think so. Dollars. I don't think yeah, so, Phil. Funded by Bill Gates. What I'm George saying Florida. is, what we're seeing is a result of people being <laughs> stuck in their apartments all winter and getting squirrely, and uh, you know, all, why all these fireworks all over the country? Not just here, everywhere. July I mean, 4th? Hmm? No, not July 4th. They were doing this in mid-June. Long before that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, in fact, I saw a report. Was... I was watching the new, a newscast because uh, 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 CBSN has all these feeds from all their major cities, and I was watching the one from Denver, and they were talking about how uh, there was some shooting. There was a fire caused by fireworks, and then they took a shot with either a drone or a helicopter from the air, and you could see the city, and there were fireworks, illegal fireworks, going off everywhere. And that's in Denver. That's not New York City. During the riots, they were throwing fireworks at the police. Uh, at, you know, uh, firecrackers, M80s, M1000s, and... Uh, uh, yeah, but I don't so care. They were just throwing them at cops. Anyway... <laughs> But. George Soros never gave me a dime. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, it, 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 I've it, rioted. It, it was it was it was uh, pretty, um, you know, pretty terrible what what's been going on lately, and a lot of it has to do with people just getting squirrely, and it's just like I predicted it thing, and and everything is bad. I mean, all over the world, their economies falling, and uh, I don't know how many people are going to get thrown out of their apartments this month because their rents came due, and the amnesty about paying rents is over with. Okay? I mean, this is all just horrible. Interesting. I have a friend that uh, had a beef with his son. Is who he in staying. Hawaii uh, by any chance? No, he's from oh. the <laughs> And uh, so he had, he had a beef with his son uh, and he told his son that he had to move out in 30 days. The son then gets uh, uh, somebody from the city that says, you can't evict me because of COVID. <laughs> and, uh, and so he couldn't throw him out. <laughs> in any event, uh, w w the problem we've got is it, 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 the world is in bad shape right now, and it isn't getting any better. And... Um, we are, I mean, I look, they showed a map today of all the states where COVID was on the rise. 
mm-hmm. there are just a handful of states where it isn't. Yep. And, 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 you know, who do we blame this on? You know, who, you got to blame it on the president. You uh, got, wait, wait, uh, shut up, Phil. Let me finish. You got to blame it on the president because he is supposedly the leader of the country and he is the guy who's supposed to be protecting us and watching out for us and coming up with the solutions to problems, and he hasn't. And uh, the reason we have over 130,000 people dead in this country now is because Donald Trump murdered them. He didn't tell people to wear a fucking mask. Yeah, yeah. It was as simple was no as that. As simple as that. How many people died of this last uh, tuberculosis uh, uh, pandemic that they had? I have no uh, idea. Phil, are you talking Phil what 70s? are you talking about? You're talking about 1920s. No, oh, I'm talking about recently. Recently, was, uh, no, there was. Believe me, it wasn't anywhere near 130,000. Phil, oh, uh-uh. I, I think it was pretty high. Yeah, what, go find a figure. Hey, Phil, go find it, and then you'll leave us alone. I had tuberculosis in 1971, and I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And there's a lot of people who have had COVID, and they're still alive. You know, uh, matter of fact, that's not what they talk about. They don't. Phil, are you going to tell me COVID death. isn't a problem? I'm going to tell you that the death rate is going down, and there is a pandemic, and people are dying. But there is influenza. Why is it going so. down, Phil? Because the president came up with a cure. Yes. Because he that's inspired us to take action. Important. Death huh? rate may be going down, but the number of people dying is going up. Oh, by the way, you're going to love this one, <laughs> Phil. That, that PPE that the president said he was. Got to make sure everybody had PPE, right? Yeah. yeah. And they did. No, they don't. Well, no, yeah, they don't. They're... Ask Charlie. They don't have it in Texas. They're yeah. they're reusing their masks. They're reusing their gowns. Mm-hmm. Some they're of the gowns they got. Mm-hmm. T- tell them, Charlie. I'm sure they have just shut up, Phil. Tell them, Charlie. It, this is just as bad as Italy was in March. I mean, the, yeah, we just oh. the hospitals are overwhelmed. They don't have the, the they 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 have so many patients. They don't have enough PPEs. Period. They don't uh, have enough masks. They don't have enough. wrote today on Facebook that there's only one ICU bed in Beaumont, Texas. And uh, so, you know, I guess if you get one patient, you're 100% full in, in Beaumont. Yes, right? but we're not talking about Beaumont. Bill. What happens if they get three patients? Two of them don't get shit. That's what happens. Oh, that, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. I was here first. Yeah. What'd right. you say, what'd you say Tony? What'd you say, Tony? I was here first. <laughs> I was here first. Yeah. Rock, uh, paper, scissors. Jeff, Rock, paper, scissors. Jeff, Jeff hasn't said anything all night. Say something, Jeff. Turn, turn your mic on. He's <laughs> muted. I don't know why I don't have to say anything. But I, I think that uh, I talked to my friends in Argentina, and they said they, they basically got the same problems that we had. Mm-hmm. You're breaking up on us, Jeff. <laughs> That's why he hasn't talked all night. Well, What's he on dial yeah. up? <laughs> no. <laughs> so no, I get a call not. today from the census. Uh, and they I think a lot of people. Wait a minute. Here, it, it, wait a minute. Jeff? Go ahead. Jeff, Jeff for some yeah, reason, Jeff. you were yes. you were you were fr- frozen. And now you're frozen again. You're having you're breaking up. I don't know why. Maybe move closer to your uh, Wi-Fi. Are you using Wi-Fi? I'm right here. Yeah. Right here at home. Well, well, now you're fine. Now you're fine. Yeah, you maybe, look wonderful. Maybe you somebody... Maybe about somebody. Argentina? And yeah, yeah, and uh, so they're, like, having the same kind of issues. Uh, my friends, like they said, they're, just, they're at home. They, they don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to go outside. They want to have the food delivered to their house. They're not going to any restaurants. The same kind of issues. And um, I think it's a global problem all over the world. And and the joke is that in Europe, they've kind of recovered it all. But they're, they're, they're much better than, than we well, are. They're not, We're let, gonna get... they're, they're not letting us in into the European Union. That's right. They're more more complex than than they are yeah. as far as trying to keep people alive and, and uh you know yeah. charlie's here in texas he used to be yeah. in arizona which is the 
Let me say that Arizona is just me, as let, bad as Texas. Now. Well, I think it's even worse. Let me say this to Phil about he was saying the death rate's gone down. Yes, it has, Phil. The death rate is not as bad as it was. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, younger people are getting it. It's not that they're not getting sick, it's just that it's not as lethal to them as it is to an older person. And secondly, we're down the line now and we're learning about ways of handling this so that we get a higher survival rate. For instance, lying people on their stomach instead of on their back, not putting them on ventilators, but trying to keep them off ventilators using things like the, uh, the plasma the, the, and remdesivir. Uh, as, as, so we, we do have um, uh, stop gaps to try and solve this problem where we didn't in the very beginning. But that still doesn't mean that people aren't still overwhelming the hospitals, aren't getting very sick, and possibly, you know, in a lot of cases, these people get coronavirus. They go to the hospital, they go through the whole thing, they're in there for an average of about three weeks, Bill. It's not a yep. small thing. And, 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 they're, they're, uh, and then they come out, and for like six months, they have all kinds of problems afterwards um, it, and it's not that's not uh, it's not fun Phil it's it's terrible so that the deaths is not the uh, uh, hallmark what is the hallmark are the numbers of people going into the hospital seeking help for this and it's overwhelming the country not and the overwhelming country. the nurses and doctors that we are so yeah. that we're say we're cherishing so much here they go through this whole nightmare again yeah, that's that's a lot on them. They don't mention the fact that a lot of these people that survive are getting hospital bills of hundreds of thousands oh, of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Are they really? I didn't know. Yeah. That. yeah. Read about a woman. Days in the hospital? Wow. She was in the hospital yeah. for COVID and she gets out and she got a bill for 700 and change. Oh, my God. Well, that? you know, an average stay now is about three weeks. If yeah. you know, and that's it, uh, if you if you don't get put on a respirator, it could be longer, and then the survival rate on a respirator is only twenty percent. Alex, yeah, yeah, yes, I wouldn't yield seven hundred thousand. What? <laughs> what? Is that what yields in a phone? <laughs> hey, I'm wondering what the bill is going to be for my seven weeks of radiation. Well, you know? I know that between my two radiations, which was the. Yeah. Uh, cyber knife thing and then the uh, seeds uh, the total between the two of them came to about a hundred and ten thousand dollars i know my my we, don't socialize we shouldn't be paying for shit this is ridiculous well, you guys have insurance? Like, yeah, well, yeah, I but, you know they send you a bill and they uh, that it's paid and uh but uh, you know they tell you how much they paid or how much it was worth uh, are you today. doing this on Medicare? Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. You're okay. doing this on Medicare? I have oh, he hates Medicare, Medicare. And then I have the Kaiser Supplemental. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's 20%. Yeah. Kaiser's in the... But, but the, he, I, he likes Medicare then. Oh, yeah. He's become a socialist. I, I've been paying you know? for Medicare for a long time. So, and, so do all of us, Phil. My yeah. doctor, Stephen Rubin, says that he likes Medicare because, like Alex said, they pay right away, he tells me, the doctor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they you know they said that the that my doctor one of my doctors told me that he would rather take Medicare than take any of the other insurance companies because they take somewhere up to six months mm. you know, to six pay months. off, whereas you know, Medicare you send them the bill and within three weeks you get a check. But I noticed in my bills because now it's Medicare that they, let's say the hospital says that they billed $140 for this drug or $900 for this drug, and uh, but they actually got paid $66, and then I had to pay eight bucks. Uh, you know, so, you know, they might bill eight, nine hundred dollars Oh, yeah, no, they, 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 what they have to do, if they're taking uh, uh, Medicare, as an yeah. example, they have to take whatever Medicare considers to be the proper amount of money uh, yeah. that uh, that uh, you know you can you can charge there. So even though they bill this, they they get paid that. Yes. And so they bill high, and they know what they're going to get. In yeah. the case, in my case, uh, uh, I think uh, they 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 paid out about thirty thousand dollars, I think, to the hospital, and so on. I, I think Medicare and Kaiser loves Medicare. 
for mm-hmm. some reason, they would prefer Medicare patients over their. Well, for uh, exactly the reason I told they get, you. They get paid fast. They get paid fast. Mm-hmm. You know, when you belong to Kaiser, you pay. Uh, like I was paying thirteen hundred a year before I turned sixty-five, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, uh, not thirteen hundred a month before oh. I turned sixty-five, and I'm actually I feel like I'm getting better care now. And they <gasps> less money. They do, they do. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! I can't okay, believe thirteen hundred a month. It's true. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Six, I had the platinum plan, and I was sixty-four, and it was thirteen hundred wow. a month. Yeah, but anyway, uh, you know, I mean, um, Jeff says. Yes, but Alex, yes, don't Jeff. don't you think that because of your age and my age, that the kind of disease that we're talking about is is still very risky for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and Phil as well. Um, right. I was going to say, I don't know what it is, 65? Or you know, young punks like Howard. How old are you, Howard? Wait a minute. Turn yeah, on your good. mic. Howard. Yeah, I'm Howard. 53. I'll be 54 August 19th. Oh, okay. So you're, you're getting to be in the uh, in the danger zone, you know. Charlie's in the danger zone. John's in the danger zone, I'm sure. Jeff, myself. Brian, how old are you, Brian? 52, 53, something like that. Yeah, you're getting there. You're getting there. Yeah. You know. Well, so I get a call today Class from of the, uh, Class of 1984. Class of 1984. And, and how, Howard and I sort of hung out in the same spots like when we were driving, cruising up. Yeah, the, cruise the El Camino. Yeah, we used to both mm-hmm. cruise El Camino, but... I was a cool guy, so I don't know if I knew him. In Santa Clara? In Santa Clara? No, no, San Mateo. I used to go to Santa Clara every once in a while. You remember the uh, the Moonlight Drive-In? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. I never did Story and King, though. I was a white guy around uh, there. I used to yeah. stay out of that area. Jeff is, I grew Je- up in Sunnyvale. <laughs> Jeff had his, oh, hand, yeah. Jeff had his hand up. Jeff, quickly. I was just going to say, the other part for me is not just my age, but all the heart issues. The, oh, yeah that yeah. I'm a very risky person. So yeah. I'm very cautious about this whole thing. I basically don't go to see anybody. But what's yeah. very strange is there are stories of people your age, my age, yeah. uh, who have are compromised in one way or another, who get it, go into the hospital, come come out, you know, yeah. and are fine. You know, didn't have to go on a respirator or anything. This There's is a, lot a very people. pernicious disease yeah. that you don't know how it's going to play itself out. And, and it spreads very fast. That's yeah. the big problem with this compared to SARS and Mars and everything else. I'm really I was sorry. in Union Square yeah. today going to the parking garage, mm-hmm. and there was this lady uh, sitting about 20 feet from the uh, from the elevator, and she, and she was screaming at the top of her lungs and not wearing a mask, and I saw the spittle coming out and said, oh, you know, at least I had a mask on and I was like 20 30 feet away yeah, yeah. but uh, well yeah, just I, remember your president is trying to kill you anyway oh, that's it was, that's it for tonight he could be spitting at you and he would not be doing the same thing he's doing right now uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for being here Howard thank you so much Thanks Aloha uh, to uh, the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace. Always a pleasure to have you here. I wish I could say the same thing about Phil Meyer, but he's the kind of pain in the ass we have to put up with when you do a citizen panel. Uh, and John Larkin, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, uh, 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 Tony. And uh, thank you to Jeff Stein. And if all of you would give a big wave goodbye, I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel. That's them for tonight. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we're we going to assemble one again tomorrow night. But in the meantime, there's going to be another one immediately following this program with Jack Bishop in the intersection, which follows next on GabNet. I'll be here again tomorrow night. Same time. Last show of the week. Uh, same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody, and by the way, stay safe. <laughs>